Okay, today we're moving on to the proxy. So, uh, for character artists, that means we're going to talk about the body sock. For environment artists, we're just going to move on and uh, create the three dimensional block out of the environment scene in Maya. Um, you can also use ZBrush uh, if you're doing environment, but it's very helpful to set up your camera in Maya first. Uh, before I move on to mine, which is uh, I'm going to do the tree man, I want to talk about what exactly a body sock is for uh, a character project. So um, this here, this was an in-game model, it was maybe 2010 but it was uh, the main character, so we spent a lot of time on it. And uh, the very first thing we did before you built any clothes and high res and then bake it down to a low res, uh, you can tell all the UVs are set up to be um, uh, baked down from a high res. We uh, started with a body sock, and this one isn't necessarily the best one that exists, but it is a... Uh, human proportion and uh, we spent some time trying to get the uh, um, the feeling looking uh, good going back and forth between the animators uh, with the shoulders and the, and the hips and stuff now we can do a better one now uh, this is 2010 but it was a good uh, place to start so uh, it's often, you know, good to go back and, and look at what is uh, successful and, and work from there. This one was maybe 2015. Uh, it was a little more stylized, but uh, I had learned a lot of things from the previous projects, to how the shoulders were going to look, and uh, this guy was maybe a little more heroic and exciting, but... Uh, um, it was a lot of back and forth with the animators to make sure that the shoulders work just right and the bends and everything. Once you get a body sock, you can then put clothes on it. Uh, this is just an NPC character uh, with uh, clothes. It was a cop uh, from a murdered soul suspect, which is a ghost game. Uh, she did have hair and stuff like that, but uh, just creating the uh, low res um, a proxy, uh, you can either do it uh, in ZBrush or you can... Uh, just m uh, block out a bunch of stuff in Maya, uh, but a lot of this is actually uh, was game art. It just I don't have the normal maps uh, for all of these characters at the moment, but they were um, clothed uh, characters with uh, normal maps. So this isn't exactly a proxy. This would be the LED zero, but it, as close as you can get to the LED zero, you want the proxy to be. It's just uh, the a cleanliness of the uh, model and the UVs and the efficiency doesn't necessarily need to be there. You can kind of whip through uh, the proxy of the clothes. Uh, but again, the first thing to do is the body sock, and I uh, would, would suggest getting feedback on the body sock before you move on to making clothes, uh, just so we have the proportions right, so you don't have to redo everything. There's a lot of major changes that can be really challenging when you start redoing proportions. Uh, but his file, I'll, I'll put up in the uh, chat, and uh, you'll be able to download it if you just want to like take a look at some old uh, uh, various characters. Uh, this one also was from a stylized game, but a different uh, stylization than this one. I think there is... It was more of a, like a blocky, uh, 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 top-down game. This one was... And so there's a, just a different look altogether that the anatomy gives uh, than this one. This is just a different style. We had v very different um, approaches uh, for style in these two uh, characters, uh, even though they were both stylized. This one was much more about blockiness and, and sharp edges. This one was more just about being feeling massive while uh, uh, having cool angles uh, that are... Uh, not necessarily sharp, but uh, feeling like they were maybe hand-drawn if you're looking at it from a distance. Anyway, uh, enough talk about body sock. I'm going to move on to creating uh, my piece here, which is going to be basically a, a mix between an environment and a, a character. So the first thing i got to figure out is the uh, scale and everything of this uh, uh, scene. So... 
I want to just very quickly create some of the base uh, planes. So we've got a big mountain, which is going to be off in the background. Uh, and usually, background isn't the first thing you start with, but this is a very big part of this uh, concept here. So let's see if I can get them all on screen at once. Uh, holding down B and middle mouse gives me the option to uh, shrink my soft selection. Uh, if you hit B, soft selection starts, turning it on and off. Uh, but what I can do is um, uh, scale it up with the middle mouse button in B. I'm going to turn off symmetry because this is a mountain, it's not symmetrical. Real low res to begin with, but... It's all right, we can easily mesh smooth it to get a lot more detail. It's got this kind of river going through it. And I'm just imagining it's coming off this direction. And so maybe, yeah, let's mesh smooth it so we have a little more geometry to play with. You can use this sculpt tool in Maya as well. Uh, if you're using ZBrush, you can sculpt a mountain in ZBrush, and I do find it is even better than the sculpt tool in Maya, but if you're in a pinch, this tool works great. Okay, so this is just the background scene. And then we've got this big hill here, start there. I just wanted uh, some sort of context to figure out how to get that hill in there. And it's probably gonna be somewhat like a mountain as well, so we can start with just creating a mound. Maybe it drops off on this side. Double clicking the edges will grab the entire edge around everything, but you can also um, click one edge and then hold shift and double click to uh, continue an edge loop. Just want it to turn off into nothing. We'll move this out further to give it more actual scale. And then now I can start thinking about that camera shot. And then if I wanted to rig this character, it's nice if I at least kind of keep it in the scale of the grid. Um, basically not being too much bigger than the grid, but it's... The grid um, can be pretty small when it comes to Unreal and, and some other programs. But I just like to keep within the grid because it's already set up its default. It's just a nice kind of thing to pay attention to. Uh, and then uh, now I need some sort of volume to insinuate the character here so I'm just gonna start with a little cylinder 
that tells me uh, kind of the volume that I want to do and then we can use that volume in ZBrush. So I might lock the camera if I'm feeling like I, it's too hard to keep the same shot. Now, if I wanted to kind of create a character that was in the center grid, uh, that might be beneficial because then I can use the grid symmetry, um, either one side or another, just to start. So I'm going to center this, make sure it's centered looking at the front camera. Just get it down that center uh, darker line, holding X, moving it back and forth until it locks in. So that's going to give me something that I can work with symmetry if I need it. Uh, this character isn't necessarily symmetrical, but it is um, just a very important habit to get into when you're doing characters to have the ability to be symmetrical. Usually it's on the uh, x-axis uh, the symmetry would be, but um, since it's facing the other direction it's going to be easy enough to, to do it that way. Alright, just save this one real quickly. And then what we should do next is uh, we can export this whole scene really into ZBrush because I can sculpt the mountain, paint the mountain in ZBrush if I wanted. Uh, but mostly I'm looking for this cylinder as the scale uh, to begin with. So I'm just going to uh, export out the cylinder as a reference. And then we can export out these uh, mountains um, separately too. Now we go to ZBrush and we'll just import the size system. Start with that. Uh, ZBrush, we draw on our canvas, hit edit, uh, click anywhere on the canvas, start rotating around. Pay attention to certain things like perspective. Uh, this is a floor, um, uh, which really essentially is just the bottom of the object, not necessarily like a grid uh, like in Maya, but it is helpful to see sometimes. Um, and then uh, symmetry, we can turn uh, that on if we want to use symmetry, but again, on this character, it's maybe not um, going. Le uh, local symmetry isn't just a turning on symmetry. That That is done by hitting X. Local symmetry is uh, when you're able to size things on their own, usually using the move tool, um, like sizing two eyeballs versus sizing them as an individual uh, um, object all at once. But let's go to my material. I just want to change that. And then I'm going to bring in the mountain foreground because I do need that to integrate into the ground. I might sculpt that as well. So we can sculpt those together. So let's um, go into import. Get the mountain foreground, cliffside foreground. And then what I'll do is I'll pen this to that hill. And now I've got something that at least is telling me what I have in Maya. And we will forego this hill, and I'm going to append a Z sphere. It's one of the easiest ways to just make it happen in ZBrush uh, to create the Z spheres is by going to append on the subtool. And you can start with a brand new one here. And what's going to happen is it's going to give me a Z sphere, but um, this Z sphere is uh, 
um, not an actual model that we use uh, to um, uh, uh, export out or anything. It's just going to be something that we build an armature with. And when we hit A, it smooths out the Z-sphere, turns it into something that we could make a polymesh 3D, and that would turn into an object that we could use later. But with Z-spheres, uh, the first thing we have to think about is uh, just drawing directly on them and having uh, a, a shape that you're building out of that. And if you notice, um, you might have... Sometimes it gets a little confused when you uh, start adding too many uh, early on. Make sure when you're starting, you're testing it out right away and hitting A and you, you want this kind of boxy thing uh, to show up. And what's going on there is adaptive skin is taking the Z-sphere and turning it into a mesh. Uh, you can change your resolution here. Uh, hitting A turns the preview on and off, and it just gives you uh, a control of creating a new mesh. Seems like a lot of hassle, but once you see what it can do, it, it can be really worth it. So I'm going to go back to the beginning and just start with um, creating a Z-sphere, moving it up, and then looking at where we are in the scene. I'm going to turn off that cylinder because I think I found the size that I want. And then we're going to start adding z-spheres that would be roots, and I'll start thinking about uh, the actual shape of this guy. So just gonna give a little more space here. Okay, so looking at him from the side, we're, we want this angle where his legs are coming out but he's got a couple of legs not just one so we want to create this um, kind of octopus shape going out Let's scale this one up a little bit made it a little too small and then as it comes down it's gonna split into multiple tubulars if you make it a little too big what happens is it envelops the one that's right next to it and then you can't pull away but now you see when I hit A it has that totally smooth mesh feel uh, we could even take um, this one move it forward a little bit and then one more to give it a kind of the head that it's got. Uh, then it's got some of these arms coming out, but they're not exactly separate from the body. They might end up kind of some of them being attached to the body itself. And yeah, I might not get the silhouette quite right. Mostly I'm just trying to set up the armature, the appendages, the separations of meshes. Uh, and then I can move a lot of these around and get a little more accurate uh, silhouette. Again, if I'm doing a character that would uh, be symmetrical, you just hit X to turn the symmetry on. But this tree is so not symmetrical, I don't really want symmetry on at all. Maybe make this arm coming down. And then he's got kind of a branching arm out here. And then we've got all of these uh, pieces up high at the beginning of an actual tree going upwards. And we can make this all the way into a huge tree if we wanted. It's not a bad idea. Let's 
He's got a little back tree, and maybe his body has a lot more weight to it. Trees are really just a bunch of tubular um, membranes going up and down. They, they end up uh, turning into roots that are all little tubes, get really, really small, and they, they kind of all twist together to become large um, trunks and, and whatnot. But they really do start out uh, as thin little roots. They get into a thick trunk and then they turn into thin little branches again and there's a consistency of volume from the um, top to bottom just if a tree hasn't been cut and it is uh, just grows uh, fully it is a consistent volume of all of the roots going into the trunk going into the top if you cut a slice of any of it you would have all of the branches and everything add up to the trunk because they're all just uh, like the tree's arteries going all the way up to all the branches, all buried in the trunk. Alright, let's get this kind of left arm. I don't want it to be quite arm shape. Maybe a little more deformed so it has a feeling of uh, not just being a humanoid tree. a little bit of organic tree feel. Trying to break the symmetry on some level. Here we go. Alright, so that gives us a, a shape to start with. I'm going to play around a little bit with some of these um, branches to get them feeling a little more bendy, a little more organic, a little more branching. Okay, so this gives me something to start with. Um, now I can uh, hit A, see that smooth mesh, that adaptive smooth mesh, and I can make it a poly mesh 3D. Now I can go back to my um, scene and I'll append that poly mesh 3D. And then when I go, uh, I've got my Z sphere one, I'll just turn that off. I can always go back to it if I ever need it. Uh, but now I've got a model that I can sculpt directly on and make into a um, uh, my my finished off proxy. Okay, I want to use the clay buildup brush. There we go. There it is. Um, here we can see it starts out really faceted because that's the mesh that comes out of uh, the Z-Sphere model and you can smooth that out just by holding on shift. This it seems to be very dense because I probably have my um, DynaMesh resolution in my uh, was it the adaptive skin which uh, is down here. If you, if you go into ZBrush you've got your adaptive skin preview the DynaMesh resolution is set there. So if I turn that down, I'm, I could start with a lower resolution. Just make sure I'm looking at the right one here. Yeah, so now it's a lower resolution. 
uh, which can sometimes help uh, just in the management of a model. It's a lot easier to smooth lower resolutions. And then um, I'm going to create a PolyMesh 3D with the lower resolution one. And where is it? Did it? It didn't do it. Okay, so let's do make PolyMesh 3D button here. And then in this new one, what I'm going to do with it is another fun little trick with uh, uh, which is going to help with the, the tree situation is uh, Dynamesh is great, but um, if, if I wanted to kind of smooth out the curvature of some of these branches, it's a little too um, gridded out. It's, it's always going to give me a real grid feel. And uh, Z remeshing is something we're going to use a lot because we can actually get some finished models of certain things uh, uh, if we, especially if we use uh, groups, which is the polygroups, if we turn on this button here and make sure that fill uh, button on is on here, you get the colors of the polygroups. If you have separate uh, colors for each tube section, uh, it's great for Z remeshing because it gives it good edge looping. It'll separate out those uh, groups on edge looping. And uh, we just want to have the keep groups button turned on. And then when you Z remesh it, it rebuilds the mesh maybe in a more sophisticated way than Dynamesh does. And it's lower resolution, but what's awesome about it now is I can divide it much cleaner, and I can go up and down, and at this lower resolution, it's a lot easier to control. So I'm going to go into move, uh, maybe a move as a brush, not as a um, gizmo up here, and you can kind of control the lower resolution a little better, and then holding down shift when with smoothing, um, makes it much easier to uh, smooth out a whole area or soften something that's a little too sharp uh, because you're dealing with less polygons. You can also kind of shrink areas with smooth. A pinch brush is also really good for that. So that's the holding down shift. Hi cat, my cat's here. I don't know if, uh, can't see my own camera, but Hopefully everybody uh, is aware of how cute Nebula is. She's really cute. Hi. So I just wanted to move some stuff around so it didn't feel so uh, angled and kind of computery. Get that organic feel back in. Don't press on the keyboard, kitty. So this is cool and all, and you can do a lot of uh, sculpting of the form at this point. You don't have to worry about silhouette matching anything that you've done so far because remember this is all brand new. You know, they, we didn't even have a proxy before this. We didn't UV anything. So we can just go to town changing it, designing it, doing as much kind of artwork as we can on this. Uh, and the next step I would do would be start sculpting. Uh, if you notice, clay buildup always has um, that kind of stair-steppy deal going on, uh, and that's because of the uh, stroke being a little too um, uh, um, limited. It's, there's only so many uh, actual strokes it gives per stroke, uh, but if you go to, what is it, curve, is it curve function? The curve itself? No. Is it curve, or is it No, it's the modifier. Okay, so it's uh, under modifier in your stroke, uh, you can change the roll distance to be like eight, and that just makes for more information in each stroke, and it's gonna be, have a lot cleaner, cleaner stroke. Uh, and then the higher resolution you divide, it almost is, is perfectly smooth. Now with the tree, that's not necessarily what I want, you know, perfectly smooth. But just to get this, um, the shape 
figured out. Uh, uh, I'm just going to kind of rough in something as fast as I can so I can get that head shape worked out. Where's that nose? Where are the eyes? And I might be losing some information here because I forgot to uh, kind of sculpt in the chin and jaw before we did a, a Z remeshing. Uh, so I might do a Z remesh again after a little bit of sculpting. And this is really important in the proxy stage is that um, the, the Z remesh, I might have done some stuff here for Z remesh to make it smoother and cleaner, but this is not really a final model. I'm still in proxy. I still can mess around. I still can throw it away and, um, and, and try something over it. Uh, but as a, uh, a model, you can get pretty far just in this pipeline. I'm going to uh, delete my lower and uh, go back to Dynamesh because I, I did what I wanted with uh, moving some of this around and I'll do Dynamesh for a little bit so I can get the shape of the face a little uh, clearer without losing uh, resolution in the face. And if you just hold down control and drag down it refreshes the Dynamesh and this is going to give me the ability to um, add some volume and then re uh, uh, add uh, the polygon information so I can continue to get details in those areas. And my Dynamesh is a little low now. At first it was easy to uh, manipulate then. Now I need it a little higher resolution. So I'm going to go up to um, let's do 256. I think that's still pretty uh, pretty decent. Yeah. So now that's probably as far as I want to go for the proxy. I just want to get that shape in the chin and there's like some cheekbone stuff. Uh, I don't want it looking too humanoid or like grudish. I want this to have this a little more of like a like uh, kind of northern European uh, mytho mythical vibe. So there's a little bit of folksiness that could be even kind of carried on into this face. But um, looking for something that just doesn't look like anything you've seen before in these tree people. I hold down control and drag down just to refresh my Dynamesh. It does a lot to um, give me more information. And if you are using uh, brushes every now and then, you get the lazy mouse. I, I totally forget to turn that off sometimes. It's a little red tail that follows the brush around. I just hit L. It'll turn it right off. Let's get that point of the nose, some nostril, some eye that kind of has a, a droop to the eye, which makes it sad and friendly. And I can just kind of sculpt the eye in. I might end up doing a sphere for the eye at some point, but even in the uh, a proxy stage. It's good to put an eye in there, but for now I'm, I just want to design this without having to think too much. That's one of the real beauties of using ZBrush is being able to not have to worry about polys while you're creating a form. Alright, so I got kind of a face starting to rough in. Definitely has a lot of issues, but uh, is going to give me something that I can say, okay, is that the right size? And it's pretty close. If I wanted it a little bigger, I could very easily just kind of mask out the face. And uh, holding down control and clicking off the face inverts the mask, and then we can scale up. Uh, we just want the. Um, 
center of the pivot to be in the center of the face. Holding down Alt unlocks the pivot so you can move it around. I just want to get it right in the center of the face if I'm going to scale up and scale down. Uh, you can also, um, holding down Control and tapping in the unmasked part softens the mask edge. And it's uh, holding down Alt tightens the edge um, uh, if you're clicking on the mask part. Is it Alt? Is it? Yeah, anyway. The. Uh, I think it. One of it, uh, yeah, the control softens it, whereas uh, the other way will tighten it up, but uh, it doesn't look like it's tightening it up. It just doesn't seem to be happening on that one. So, yeah, that softens it, control, and I'm pretty sure all should tighten it, but. Maybe it's control and alt. Yeah, control and alt tightens it. There we go. So if you want a cleaner mask, uh, use that. So let's go back to this. If I had my move tool in the right place, holding down alt moves it into uh, the right pivot area, and then you can scale up and down. Um, I'm actually pretty happy with this, so I, I didn't plan on doing it. I just wanted to show how easy it is. Okay, and then... Um, I want to just kind of get a lot of information here. I'm glad we're in Dynamesh mode because there's a whole bunch of uh, changes I want to do to the neck here and I don't want to get stuck with uh, too much or too little polys. A little more. It's flatness. I really like the idea of this kind of flat head pan look. Clay buildup fills in a lot of nooks and crannies, so it does a good job when you, we're looking at a valley, uh, adding some uh, just information in that valley. And when you're using Dynamesh and you fill in a valley and you re-Dynamesh, that little hole will just go away completely. And normally I'm pretty uh, particular about symmetry, but for trees... We want a little bit of that uh, organic kind of twist feel. Give it a little little nostril. And then Dam Standards, a wonderful brush that, that'll kind of pinch in and it's good for creating sharp uh, corners and lines while still feeling organic. Uh, it's really good for uh, cr uh, skin creases, wrinkles, and stuff uh, w that isn't totally mechanical. And there's a lot of striation on that. Bark usually has that, but I'm I'm mostly just leaving it in because it's a proxy, and I'm I'm giving it as rough value as I can. Um, sometimes I notice in in trees uh, there's more of a uh, filled-in feeling, right? It's it's not just like a cardboard tube that may be twisted and empty uh, because there's all this water going in it. Uh, it tends to kind of inflate. So the inflate brush uh, can be really useful for that. It's also useful for kind of growing certain muscles to push them together. Uh, and I find that to be a very useful brush for making organic uh, feeling things. Another thing I will do eventually after I'm done with my proxy is uh, come back with uh, some brushes uh, that might have some bark texture actually on them. Uh, I just want to build out my forms and understand my forms before I put any texture on it because otherwise everything gets too messy and it ends up being a little uh, overly developed. It just kind of, it's hard to get all of your details to look good if you've squished them around too many times. 
So that's why I don't really think about this being a final or a surface or anything. I'm, I'm just trying to create a form that's going to look really good in silhouette. It's not quite there yet. So it's still a little too mechanical. So I got to break up that stiff feel to make it feel more alive, more uh, like a, a, a the silhouette of a tree. But again, I'm not thinking about details at all at this point. And so I've got this tree. I might feel like it could use a little more branching, a little more of the um, root feel. Like, I, okay, I got some in here, some branching, but I might want to get a little more in. And then this is, I'm going to show a really cool tool that it works in conjunction with Z-Spheres. Uh, and we can add all kinds of extra details uh, on a whole extra level but um, here we need it to be in the same uh, sub tool as the Z sphere so I'm gonna bring this guy back into the Z sphere uh, um, tool and we will show uh, this cool new tool so here we go we got back uh, with the the mountain and everything I'm gonna turn off kind of these older models just go with the one that just brought imported in yeah it's just this one and uh, there is a really cool tool when you're using Z spheres I'll just append a, a new one um, it's uh, under adaptive skin there's Z sketch and basically this is something where we can uh, if we turn on edit sketch uh, we'll be able to actually draw directly on the model with Z spheres in a more fluid way I don't necessarily recommend this for everything but for this tree in particular it's going to be awesome uh, it also works really well if you're doing very interesting organic aliens or or um, uh, any kind of organic very complex uh, uh, shapes uh, this edit sketch thing works really well so uh, I just want to make sure my my size is right on my brush still a little big when I undo it gets at me out of edit sketch mode so I gotta make sure I am hitting the button again so it works but now I can draw these kind of more cylindrical organic shapes into the roots and I feel like this is going to add a lot more forest uh, feel. You can really layer them. If you hit A, it goes back to the, the um, Dynamesh system. And if we go to Adaptive Skin, this is, I think that's going to be the resolution. So if, do I change that? And higher resolution I think it it is but I have to click on it once to get it to work no nope. okay still not huh. wait no it is higher resolution it doesn't look it though I don't know why it does that or I think I have to draw a little bit more with it for it to yeah there we go no, it's still kind of faceting looking, but it is a higher resolution Dynamesh. Alright, so I just want to really paint that feeling of roots going into the mountain here. These kind of tubulars branching out. Totally tubular. And you see it like layers on top of itself. Uh, it's using the under uh, geometry as a grid. And so you can really build up this way. Um, I like clay build up just fine. I think that's usually all you really need. But uh, if, if you really want to go to town on kind of creating a really intense, uh, detailed pr uh, proxy, this is a great way to just get some shapes in there that you wouldn't normally be able to do quite so quickly. I won't really be able to branch these because 
uh, they don't, well, does it work? Okay, so it does work just fine. It works by screen space, that's great. Yeah, cool. A little... Get it any higher? It seems a little too low res to do some of that work up there. Why is it doing it so low res? Let's see. Maybe it's unified skin? Yeah, I think you have to actually change both. That is funny. Yep, that fixed it. So there's adaptive skin and unified skin. And one is the Dynamesh, and one is taking the Z uh, sketch and, and smoothing it. Uh, so you do have to turn both on to to get a higher resolution. That's going to get me these branches up here. Now the only major issue with creating branches like this is you don't have uh, UVs uh, that are easy to repeat, you don't have the, t the cylindrical tile system, and so I, I find that most of the time you're going to replace a lot of these with just cylinders, but in order to get your design worked out, it's a wonderful way to uh, just feel a little more free with your uh, application of form. Alright, a little, a little more here, some more fun things going into the back, maybe. And I did want something from the arm kind of going back into the... Alright, so, we'll see what we can salvage from this. Let's do... Yeah, some of that gets a little messy in there, because the... It's a little too separate of spheres, but I bet it, but it will work out when I turn it into a... a Dynamesh. It's over here. Yeah, some of that is not very thick. I might have gone a little too low with the unified skin, so or too high with the unified skin. So let's turn that back to like 256. There. That's kind of a nice in-between. Still getting thin, and I can, I can make it even thinner when I uh, do some final th tweaks. All right, so I'll make this a Polymesh 3D. And just like the Z-Spheres, you can't really uh, work with it until you turn it into a Polymesh 3D, and then I will append it. Oop. This guy, and now I can turn off that Z-Sketch. So there's the guy, there's... Okay, cool. There it is. Okay, so this is the... Um, Z sketch, and I want to integrate it with the guy. I just have to make sure I find the guy. We'll move it down so it's right on top of the Z sketch, and we can say merge down. And now I can turn on Dynamesh and just bring them all together. And now I, I just need to go and do more detail and more sculpting. So uh, this is uh, just some tools I wanted to show in ZBrush, how to quickly get some proxy worked out. I think the other tools are really nice. I've, I've talked about before, like Trim Dynamic gives it nice chisels. 
Um, there's also, uh, let's see, we've got um, the, in hi cat. There's, uh, if you want to use uh, tubes uh, for a tree thing like this, this does actually kind of create tubes on a surface, uh, but the Z sketch thing was basically doing that already. Uh, but mostly I just go with uh, clay buildup, trim dynamic, uh, pinch every now and then, and uh, the dam standard being a, a very, very helpful one. Slice gives a little more control, a little uh, uh, too much control if you ask me, but dam standard is really good for getting um, a nice organic uh, uh, feel, whereas slice I think is just a little too linear. Where is it? Slice. Or slash, that's what it is. It's just a little too sharp. Sometimes I don't feel like I, I, I can get the that sense of it being organic, but for the tree, it's actually going to work out really well. Uh, just damn standard can give me a little more tightness and while still feeling organic. I'll just go back and forth between those every now and then. All right, now it's about making it feel right. Uh, there's a lot of faceting still, and that's okay because this is still just a proxy. I just want to get that silhouette feeling right. Definitely going to have to do the uh, sculpture uh, work to the mountain to get that working as well. And now that I've made some roots, it'll be a good opportunity to kind of sculpt the uh, mountain around the roots. That's really fun. Alright, so in the, the drawing, I've got this kind of shelf of grass sticking out over here, uh, just to give some visual interest. And then there's this, like, like, probably end up being dirt right here. I'll probably end up pulling this whole thing up a little bit, just in case I ever want to move the camera. See, I can do that by isolating it at this edge, and then I'm just going to move it. And then we can like do a dynamesh here, so we're not using these subdivisions anymore. Looks like we got some ugly geometry, a little too thin, and the dynamesh didn't like that. Uh, whenever I get something like that, it does cause a lot of problems uh, trying to do a Z remesh or anything. Those little little bitty polygons cause all kinds of issues. So uh, that's when I do like to use the knife tool. If you do a control shift, it gives you a new set of tools. Select rectangle is usually what the default is. And then the knife uh, rectangle, uh, that's going to just cut right through something. Um, I, I don't like the knife rectangle, I like the knife curve. That's what it is. And then uh, when you drag a curve, uh, you'll see a shaded side and a non-shaded side, and it cuts everything to the shaded side. So that way I can just cut off that ugly part of the mesh, right? No. Nope. Oh, it's what it's doing is it's cutting through it, uh, which is not exactly what I want here. Yeah, it slices right through. That's not what I want. Let's do a clip curve, which doesn't exactly cut it. Um, that'll flatten it, everything to that dark edge, uh, and that sometimes fixes the uh, the issue. You see all that m mesh looks really nasty over there. Okay, I think I'm going to go back. I'm getting too many issues to feel comfortable moving on with the DynaMesh. And I can see why. It's because there's no thickness to it, and so it tried to think that there was some thickness to certain areas. Um, what I can do is extrude the entire thing uh, using the uh, z, um, the Z modeler. Now it's not my favorite tool uh, because I'd rather just use polygons and bring this into Maya. 
but I can show it off right now if I want to extrude a polygon uh, group in, and so I have some thickness to it we can uh, use the Z modeler if I uh, mouse over a polygon I can right click on it and say extrude and a polygroup island is what I want to do polygroup island and I should be able to extrude uh, the whole thing it looks like it's it a little nasty when I do that because it's going it doesn't like being inverted like this but I can uh, invert it so everything looks inverted and I do see some extra little edges so uh, maybe did not like it because of the polygroup island thing. Maybe we just say island? Let's try that. Yeah, that looks... It still got... Oh, I guess that's just because of the weird angle. Uh, okay, so I'm going to extrude it down so that we get this kind of... in Everything's inverted and it looks ugly, but what I can do with Q modeler, with the Z modeler, is invert the faces and where is it um, flip faces and then I'll just do uh, island which is everything that this geometry is connected to click the button and there we have it now I've got some thickness in the model and so when I dynamesh now it's not going to give me those weird little holes because there's thickness everywhere not always necessary uh, just this shape was not happy about what I was doing now I can go back in here and just give it a little more of the shape that I wanted to match the concept. Alright, now just before I move on, I'm just going to kind of flatten out some of these bulbous things. Some of them are nice. Uh, trees do have some of that, but I think we're getting a little too much. And smooth out certain areas, so it's not all faceted. And then uh, this is, you know, a decent proxy for this stage because, you know, all we're doing is the Z, uh, or the, the ZBrush stage of the proxy, uh, but we do want to get it into Maya to see if it's working with the cameras and everything. And uh, generally, I don't like to bring in meshes this dense into Maya. So what I would end up doing is uh, two things. One, it, in order to bring it in Maya, it needs to be one polygroup, which uh, you can just hit Control W, turns everything into a polygroup, or you can go down to polygroups here and uh, group everything. Um, like auto group usually groups everything that's an island together but what I would um, want to do before that is reducing the polys and so at this point I'd probably do another Z remesher I did it earlier and then I went back to Dynamesh and I know that's kind of back and forth but a Z remesher will give me something that is at least uh, um, easier to manage uh, there are a lot of groups in here. I, I think it might get a little frustrating to try to keep the groups now. So I want to see what happens if I don't. And I just hit the Z remesher. Usually uh, the edge flow is determined by the groups and that's helpful. But at this point I think there's just too many broken sections of the group. Okay, so yeah, this is kind of like what I would expect for proxy resolution uh, uh, maybe a little more dense in the face if we have a real character rather than you know just tree guy but this would be something that now I could bring into um, uh, into Maya to test the shot or if I want to do any rigging or posing or changes so oh, I don't necessarily need UVs at this stage but ZBrush does have a real fun, easy tool to UV things, especially even complicated things. It's going to not be UVs that I use later because it'll this it's not going to give me the best UVs. But it's nice to have UVs uh, just in case uh, the export uh, is broken or, or something uh, because of the UVs. So I'm just going to UV Master. I'm going to turn off everything and say Unwrap. 
it's going to do a really ugly unwrapped job uh, but because it's a Z remeshed model it'll be cleaner than if it was a Dynamesh uh, you can't tell what it looks like but if you go into um, Z plugin and say flatten it'll show you the UVs but just remember you have to unflatten to go back to that model because it was actually flattening out the model and uh, it just gives you a base UVs to start with Again, you didn't, it's not needed, but I like to have them just in case I throw uh, any sort of test on there. And then we export, yeah, that object, this uh, tree man, and I'm going to export it as an OBJ. And we can export this mesh. This is a little too dense as well, so we can just quickly do a Z remesher to it. That gives us something that we could bring into game. Uh, and uh, again, if I'm taking this into Unreal, probably should unwrap it. Just even if it's a proxy, it's just nice to give it a quick unwrap. Uh, basically, proxies in um, or don't need UVs, but uh, game engines do. So you always have to throw something on there. So I just use ZBrush real quick to give it something, and then we can say cliffside foreground. Um, proxy and now we can bring it into Maya there we go and then bring in the cliffside uh, this model that's got some kind of uh, back face uh, from the Dynamash and issues and there might it might be uh, a challenge to fix, but this is a proxy. We're really going to throw away a lot of this, and anything with that kind of back, that many back faces is probably going to cause a lot of issues. So, we're probably going to rebuild all of this. But as a proxy, it's what we're looking for, and we can just leave it as that. I'm not looking for finished, clean models when it comes to proxies. And that's it.